So we are following reports uh, of strikes in Syria this morning. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, seven people were killed in strikes near Damascus. A Syrian military source told Reuters that Israel is responsible for the attack. There has been no comment yet, though, from the Israeli military. Meanwhile, there appears to be progress on a possible deal to release Hamas hostages. CIA Director William Burns met with officials from Israel, Egypt and Qatar for negotiations yesterday. Israel is calling the talks constructive despite what it said were significant gaps. Meanwhile, Israel is accusing UN staff in Gaza of being involved in Hamas's October 7th attack in, on Israel, prompting several countries, including the U.S., to halt funding for the UN agency for Palestine. So joining me now with more from Jerusalem is BBC News correspondent Mark Lowen. Mark, good morning. Um, listen, I want to start with these allegations uh, about uh, members of uh, UNRWA being involved in the attack in October on Israel. What are those allegations? Hi there, Anne-Marie. Well, the New York Times has seen the dossier given to uh, the UN by Israel, by the Israel's government, detailing uh, what Israel says are the allegations and what they believe they have gleaned uh, from 12 staffers from uh, UNRWA, the UN uh, Office for Palestinian Refugees. Uh, they say that they uh, tapped the phones and, and found out that uh, some of them were discussing their involvement in the Hamas attack. In the Hamas attack on the 7th of October, one was told to bring rocket propellers held grenades, uh, which uh, he was storing at home. Uh, ten of the twelve were described as members of Hamas. One was described as, me as a member of Islamic Jihad, which is uh, a sister organization of Hamas, which was also involved in the attacks. And some were described as working at UNRWA schools. Remember, the UN agency runs almost 300 schools in Gaza. So uh, that is what Israel is alleging. The UN is taking those allegations very seriously, immediately dismissing nine of them. One of them is already dead, apparently, according to the UN. Two are being identified. And those allegations have led now, as you say, to a number of Western governments halting and freezing their funding September. Uh, suspending their funding of, UNRWA, of UNRWA. And then what does that mean for those within Gaza without this funding? Well, look, the head of UNRWA himself has said that the vital life-saving assistance on which two million people rely is about to end. It is a very serious crisis, of course, for that UN agency, which runs shelters, which uh, it does the aid distribution at the moment uh, inside Gaza. My sense, uh, and, and, and the sense of, of people who I've spoken to in this region, is that this is, um, a, a, of course, a temporary halt uh, while the UN launches this investigation. But it is in no, nobody's interest, in, in, certainly in, in Western governments, to see UNRWA UNRWA's operations halt. And even though the US, for example, is one of those countries that has suspended funding, John Kirby, the White House national security spokesman, was at pains to point out at the same time that the violations of 12 members of staff should not impugn the agency that employs 13,000 people in Gaza and does vital work, in his words, saving literally thousands of lives. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, thank you so much.